Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about real-time analytics in Fabric with KQL database, what is KQL query set, event stream. We are going to talk about all of these with an example. Let's go and check it out. Um, to to talk about real-time analytics, let's start talking about Fabric. Fabric is a end-to-end <laughs> -end software as a service um, analytics offering by Microsoft, which includes multiple workloads to cover all aspects of a uh, uh, analytics system from data integration, data warehousing, data engineering, data science. And one of those workloads is real-time analytics. So what is real-time analytics? Uh, these days, um, the data uh, comes in all shapes and uh, types. Like it's not always uh, like a database that you have the data coming overnight and uh, the frequency of the changes is not um, always that often. There are situations that data changes very fast. For example, in a stock exchange scenario, uh, data might change every second or every millisecond. And you need to capture these changes. Sometimes depending on uh, on the change, you might also need to take some actions. For example, if the numbers goes above this, go be below this, go and do this, go and do that, or find a pattern in it. Uh, so it's not always just monitoring that those values that are coming, but also uh, doing some actions. So real-time analytics usually talking about these kind of scenarios that you have data coming, stream of data coming, um, usually it's the time series uh, data structure. Uh, it has a time, uh, date and time portion on it. Um, so it is a stream of data coming and you want to do some analysis, monitoring, uh, further um, actions on it. Uh, Fabric real-time analytics is basically a, a platform that gives you these options, a platform that gives you the ability to capture these data streams, store it in a database, um, push it to other outputs, and also do some monitoring on top of it, write some queries on it, uh, and it is done with some components that we, that we are going to talk about. Uh, Real-time analytics is something usually um, happens a lot in predictive maintenance, in monitoring environmental uh, values changes, quality control, uh, things such as IoT devices, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, in cybersecurity, in health, energy management, there are areas that you need to track and monitor values closely, especially if they are changing uh, quite often. Uh, one <clears throat> one example scenario of this <clears throat> would be when you have a lot of IoT devices um, and these devices might capture some uh, temperature. Assume that uh, these uh, there are um, IoT devices in every hotel room uh, in one hotel capturing temperatures and they need to send it to a centralized place. Uh, in that place, not only they get monitored, but also if there's a pattern that some of them, like in a certain floor going above a threshold, probably something is happening. So a cool down mechanism should kick in and, and things like that. So this is this is one example scenario. Uh, usually this type of things happens a lot in IoT um, device scenarios, but it also happens in other systems as well, like ticketing, monitoring, and, and all other predictive maintenance situations that I mentioned to you. So what are components of a real-time analytics in Fabric? In Fabric, we have uh, three main components for this. First one is event stream, which is like a hub that you get multiple uh, sources, multiple destinations. Uh, and then we have KQL database where uh, you store these data. Uh, uh, and uh, it is like a database. It has a query language, which is KQL uh, specifically. Um, and then KQL query set, which is like a uh, studio that you can manage your queries, save it, export it, share it with others. These are the three main components in this. And KQL database behind the scene stores the data in one lake, which I explained that in another video. Uh, so event stream uh, is uh, like a hub. It gets data from sources, for example, it can get data from IoT um, and 
event hub, IoT hub, and then pass it to both KQL database. At the same time, it can send it to Lake House. At the same time, it can um, send it somewhere so that a notebook can run on top of it, send it to a reflex for data activator. So it can ha have multiple inputs and outputs. It comes with uh, options to have sources and destinations for it. And at the time of creating this video, these are the sources and destinations available for it. Uh, KQL uh, stands for Cousteau um, Query Language. This is a query language on streaming data, which um, is slightly different from SQL query language. I would say it's easier to use it compared to SQL query language, but you see this is an example query here that gets data from temp table, consider temp to be temperature table, where temperature is greater than 50. It joins it with humidity table on device column or attribute on it, and then selects the temperature, humidity, and the date time. Not a complicated query language to work with. <coughs> Um, KQL database is the place that you store these uh, streaming data, like a table structure. You can have multiple tables. Your table can have columns with different data types. You can use shortcuts in it, uh, which I explained in another video, materialized views, functions. So it's like a database that you control and manage. Q KQL query set, consider this as SSMS for SQL Server. Uh, it's a management studio. It's a place that you write your queries. You can have different tabs. Each tab have a different query. The output of that query, you can export it. You can save the query. You can share the query with others. Uh, so it's like your development studio for KQL queries. Uh, now I'm going to show you one example how this works. So to uh, to show you that example, I'm going to show you this um, because I don't have any IoT devices in this demo to show it to you. I'm creating a custom application using JavaScript. So imagine this custom application is actually inside an IoT devices, captures the temperature and sends it um, to event stream. Event stream will capture this information, will send it to a KQL database, and finally we would have Power BI report, read near real time report that uh, connects to that KQL database and monitor the changes. Uh, so this example, uh, for building this example first, you need to go to your Microsoft Fabric portal and then go under real-time analytics area. In the real-time analytics area, you would see that we have these uh, three types of object we can create. You can even use some sample options to create, which is good to get yourself familiarized with this. Um, so you can create a KQL database. All you need is just a name for that. And then you can create an event stream as well. Again, for this, you just need a name, but the configurations of these are important. So I have already created an event stream. Uh, let me just go and filter my event stream. So I have already created this, this event stream, KQL sample custom app, yes. Uh, an event stream can have uh, sources and destination. Now in this one, I already have sources, um, one source created for the custom application I want to use, but I'm going to just at the same time that that is opening, I'm going to just create a new event stream. So show you that uh, test event stream to uh, to show you that how this process is done. So event stream is like a hub, as I mentioned to you, this is a view of that hub. Uh, it would have nodes, the event stream itself, the sources and the destination. So this would connect, would get from the sources and pass it to the destinations. Um, one of the destinations, for example, is KQL database. So uh, as a source, I can have multiple sources. I can have a sample data source. Again, good to get started. Azure Event Hub, IoT Hub, situations that you get IoT devices and you set these up in Azure. Um, but the one that I'm using right now is a custom app. So when I create a custom app, I just put a name for this custom app, custom app sample, whatever you might call it. You just create it, all you need is a name. Then this would give you a set of keys to connect to that. Uh, so this uh, custom app source is created. You see that at the bottom, it also gives me some options such as the name of the of this keys. These keys are important because um, connection string primary key, for example, is something I need to use to connect to it from a real custom app or the entity name as well. 
And it also gives you some sample code. So if you are not much familiar with coding, you can use these codes to generate that. And it gives you codes in Kafka or other languages. Um, so once we have that, then we can create a destination. But for now, I'll just go to the code part. So I'm using, I'm using Visual Studio Code, and this code that I have is a JavaScript code, Node.js. So you will need to install Visual Studio Code and Node.js. I already have this uh, link in my blog. Use the link down in the um, description below to get that. You'll have your connection string and entity name uh, there. So you need to enter those there. Uh, and then you can just run this code. To run this code, you can use PowerShell, but before running it first, you need to install a um, couple of module, uh, event hubs module, after that install moment. And finally, you can run this code. My file name is custom app livestream.js. You can run it with node space, the name of that, as long as you are in the same folder. And when you run this, this would send batches of, um, of this kind of data that is um, the temperature, time, humidity, and device ID. This will send it to, to that event stream. Then you can go to that event stream. Uh, I'll go back here to that event stream. Now, in this case, this is not the keys that I used. I used the keys for the other one that I've created here. Um, so I'll go back to this. So here is um, the source coming. I can also go and check the format of the data. When I click on the event stream, it shows me a preview of the data, which should come gradually. I'll make this slightly bigger as well. Uh, while that data preview is coming, I can also check the data insight and see how the data input were um, through the time and the output, then you need to set the output. So for the output, you can set custom app lake house reflex, which is quite helpful. And you want to use data activator to apply some, uh, to do some actions depending on what happens on the data. Uh, but in this case, I'm using a KQL database and the KQL database is the database that I've just created before this. Once you set up the database, um, because it knows the format of incoming data, it gives you a suggestion of mapping incoming data data to your destination output data, which you can just follow next, 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 and get that done. Because the incoming data is in JSON format, you have to choose that when you are mapping that. Um, so back in here, I see also the data preview in here as well. So this is pretty much how this is set up. Once you've created this uh, source to destination, you probably need to run your application again so that the data gets into there. Um, you can check the data in this by going to that KQL database directly. So I'll go to my KQL database. And this is the one that I've created for this example. In this database, um, I have just one table. I can click on the table. It shows me some information about it. How big is the table itself, the size of it. If you want to query the data for it, you can click on the three dots and then say query table show any hundred records. This would automatically uh, give you the KQL um, code samples, which is not really complicated. For example, to get uh, hundred rows from a table, you can just use this table name, take hundred. That gives you the hundred rows from a table. And this is that, this is that code. Um, then you can um, use this query to build Power BI report, or you can, um, or you can even change your query uh, in some ways. Now this is just take 100 records, which is sample records, but mm, you can change that to have um, like all of these um, record basically. Uh, like I can say take 10,000. Like for example, if I want to. Uh, take more records, things like that. So once you got your uh, um, query sorted, um, you can save it in KQL query set, but I don't need to. I can just go and build Power BI report on top of it. When I click on it, it brings up um, the editor for building Power BI report. It's basically similar to the Power BI online report editor. You go and build your report. Here is the query that we have. I can have a line chart showing, for example, temperature as the value and then using entry time as the x axis. And it gives me a line chart like this. 
uh, and I can build another one. Now I already built a um, report, which I'm going to show you that. Uh, and the report that I have is this report, custom app live stream report, uh, which is similar to what you saw already there. The only difference is that in your report, when you click on the page in the format of the page, there's a page refresh settings. This is an important setting to set. Like if you want near time, a near real time refresh, then you probably want to have it refreshed quite often. For example, here I set it to refresh every one second and the show details would show me some of the details of that. If you can't set it to, um, to something like that, for example, if you, five minutes is your minimum interval. This is something that the capacity admin can set it in the capacity capacity settings of admin portal. Um, but then you can have your app running um, and sending the data to this and see this in the reading view and the near real time changes would be appearing in there. So that's a really simple application for uh, showing you how the real-time uh, analytics works. In summary, the real-time analytics is, um, is a platform in Fabric that provides the tools, the services for you to capture streaming data from sources such as IoT Hub, Event Hub, uh, and then pass it to KQL database for storing or also some other places, but KQL database would create a good structure for storing it, then you can write uh, KQL queries on top of it and have the data monitored, um, or, or you can send it to other um, um, other workloads such as data uh, activator using reflex and do some other actions on top of it. I hope you liked this video. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, bye.